Hello everybody and welcome back to Insane Brit Gaming. I am the Insane Brit and uh, this is this week's News Friday and I will talk about all week's gaming news, gaming topics and some anime news if I find it. Now there is a lot to talk about. I haven't done a News Friday in about two or three weeks but there's a lot I want to get off my chest. A lot, of been, a lot that has been happening in the gaming community. So I am going to have to stop this video a few times because the stories are quite big. I'll readjust and I'll go into new stories as and when. Uh, so first thing first we're going to be talking about Battlefield 5 sales. Miss targets as EA blames a lack of multiplayer <coughs> modes in particular uh, for its actual absolute failing. So the article reads, EA has been uncharacteristically ba uh, bad at Christmas with Battlefield underperforming and FIFA sales falling flat uh, on previous years. Mirrored by the controversy since the moment it was announced, EA has revealed the Battlefield V has sold below expectations. It's blaming the fact that it focused on single player uh, stories instead of a battle royale mode. That's just to give you the gist of the actual story in itself. Although Battle Royale mode ha in for Battlefield has been promised for March, the game shipped with over only standard multiplayer, standard multiplayer, and a story mode made up for just three short campaigns. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, a fourth one was released uh, for free after launch and was easily the best of the bunch, which it seemed to underline suspicions that the game had been rushed out before it was even finished. Of course, the pick up with the Christmas market, no doubt. Uh, as well as the lack of Battle Royal mode, EA executive Blake Georgensen, who we've spoken about before, blamed the poor performance on a busy Christmas period. Battlefield 5 was delayed uh, a month until November because EA claimed it needed more time, although it seemed fairly obvious they were just doing it to try and get out of the way of Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, and Red Dead Redemption 2, which kind of made perfect sense. You were competing with the likes of Red Dead, you are competing with the likes of Black Ops, but at the same time, when you do that, what you're doing is, is you're taking yourself out of the market and not competing anymore, and then people are essentially buying those games first. Not giving me the option to pick up your game is basically giving me two options, and that's Red Dead or uh, Black Ops. And one of them multiplayer, one of them story, which one am I going to go for? Uh, and Battlefield is basically left on the shelf. So that's kind of a poor strategy, unfortunately, uh, in what was an overcrowded marketplace at that particular time. Uh, you were better off releasing it and letting people make the choice um, let them struggle to make that choice. It's unfortunate, but that's what it is, because as soon as I pick up Black Ops and I like it and I stick to it, I'm going to be investing in Black Ops. Black Ops gets all the profit while you are not even competing because you've taken yourself out of the marketplace now. Uh, and I'll get into the stories and stuff like that in my personal opinion on that and uh, further controversies that go on. EA has blamed poor sales on the fact that millions of people are still quite happily playing Battlefield 1 and 4. Battlefield 4 was good. I hated Battlefield 1. I thought it was shit, but whatever. Uh, which could imply a longer gap in between sequels in the future. Unfortunately, the later release date <clears throat> meant that the game launched deeper into a comp competitive holiday um, where heavy discounting prices was a big factor. In addition, uh, we also made the decision to prioritize other features, including a single player experience at launch over a multiplayer mode. Jorgensen said this year's Battle Royale became the most incredibly popular in the shooter games. As a result of these decisions, we struggled to gain momentum and we did not sell meet our sales expectations in the quarter. Battlefield sold 7.3 million copies. as a million less than what was planned for. A similar fortune fell uh, experience in DICE's Star Wars Battlefront 2 a year before. Uh, now, before we get into this next section, um, you prioritize... Now, obviously, Battlefield is known for two particular things. One of them, of course, it's the main multiplayer, which everybody loves, whatever. And then you've got story mode. I didn't pick up the game personally because it didn't have stories, and the stories were really, really short. And... Um, there's other elements to it as well that he's failing to mention. He says there's a lack of Battle Royale mode. Well, you promised that, but it's just coming out in March. Which, to be honest with you, a little bit late in the game. Uh, really, when it comes to this Battle Royale mode. Not that it can't be successful, but at this particular point in time, you're just now really putting it in a pre-existing games. Uh, so maybe people can pick it up cheap, but essentially, meh. I don't see a lot of people going back to that to experience that when we've got um, Apex Legends and uh, whatever, Fortnite's already out there. But whatever, uh, you're doing that now. Like I said, it's pretty late in the game. Plus, Black Ops already had it, which was a smart thing to do, launching with it. Considering the fact that you delayed your launch uh, to do whatever, to take yourself out of the marketplace, you should have added a Battle Royale mode in that time. Uh, or maybe just patched it or made it a downloadable DLC free straight away kind of thing, you know what I mean? As soon as the game launched anyway, or at least a month after, uh, where you could have really hit momentum. We're now two months after. Sorry, guys, I've got an advert now popping up, and it's pissing me the fuck off. 
because I want to go along with the article in itself and I can't because there's an ad piece of shit I'm not going to say what the ad is because I'm not giving them anything uh, but anyway so yeah basically that killed my friend sorry uh, but yeah but also and and this is that's one underlying thing which I can agree the marketplace was packed whatever uh, but another under fundamental thing they're failing to mention is the political side of it uh, being doubling down on what they said not listening to their community they put out a product they had feedback on it with the trailer and everything else and what was most disliked trailer in the entire world of gaming apparently <laughs> uh with hundreds of thousands of dislikes and everything else and people commenting on it and giving them feedback instead of actually listening to the community who buy their game they basically said oh if you don't like our game then just don't buy it that was the actual statement from the company and then we had particular people, individuals, executives and uh, producers and stuff like that. I can't remember their exact positions, but high up in the company, uh, directly attacking their fan base even further, calling them all sexist and all this kind of stuff, insulting the people that are going to be buying your game. You know what I mean? And everything else. We understand there's some people that generally hate uh, women or whatever, maybe. I don't know. But at the same time, there was a large portion of people who said well, this is inaccurate and blah 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 and there was counter arguments to it and all the rest of it but instead of listening to their community they kind of just pissed off the community and that's why you sold a hell of a lot uh, you sold a hell of a lot less but at the same time you still managed to sell seven point whatever million over seven million copies and you're saying that it's disappointing that's just something about your budget in itself i can't remember the exact budget of a particular game that i was gonna buy but i found out the, the marketing budget and it was crazy it was like a I don't know if it was like two, three, four, five, ten, five to ten million. Maybe it was more on marketing, and I thought that's fucking crazy. In today's global market with the gaming community and everything else, you don't really need to spend that kind of money on marketing. A free YouTube uh, video, a video to upload on YouTube, minus somebody's in production, ain't going to cost you millions. It's going to cost you whatever amount on your official YouTube channel, and that will spread. That will get millions of views. Gamers like myself will talk about it. Battlefield communities will talk about it and blah 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 and it will go on from there um, So basically rather than acknowledging their own mistakes from the, what they've said publicly and what they've actually uh, A few individuals in in the actual company who's actually said themselves to fans insulting them and all the rest of it rather than acknowledge their mistakes in that regard um, They've basically said just said oh we didn't have a battle royal mode uh, Remember the story games do you know uh, the stories that you put out by the way this is another aspect of it I want to talk about. The stories in the game, because regardless if they were good or not, they were short. It was tagged on. It felt like you'd underlined. If you focused on two things, multiplayer and story, the stories weren't even that good and they were short. Where have you, you know, what the fuck? What was you doing then for that period of time? If your multiplayer wasn't good enough to, to get more people out, more people into the game, and your stories were crap, because I didn't pick it up uh, based on that, because I knew the story, I heard, there was going to be either no story or it was going to be really short or I just didn't like the political side of it where you went down that route as well and insulting players so I kind of didn't pick it up you know what the hell were you doing it's got to be your market mistakes but rather than acknowledge that you just said we haven't got about raw mode in it which is a big fucking mistake uh, in itself uh, anyway it goes on to say about <coughs> FIFA uh, I'm not going to go too much about FIFA uh, but basically they're saying overall um, blah 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 hold on it's got some sales numbers here but I don't want to go into that uh, uh, blah blah blah. Oh, FIFA 19 saw no rise in sales of FIFA 18, and EA again blaming the previous games for uh, cannibalizing sales of the previous ones. So basically, they're saying everyone's happy with FIFA 18 and didn't really care to pick up FIFA 19. But at the same time, I think that they didn't really innovate a lot in FIFA 19. They really didn't. I'm somebody who buys it yearly as a fanboy, and even I could admit that they didn't do much. It was basically essentially the same game, though I do enjoy it. Meh. Uh, the Champions League, as for adding that in, that should have been a bonus on top of whatever else you had planned for the new game and the franchise, and you didn't do anything, you didn't innovate, the marketing was boring, uh, oh, you got Champions League, the music plays. You did a couple of things right with a new commentary team, you, uh, f uh, but you didn't do nothing new for, uh, the story mode was good, you did nothing new for, um, uh, what do you call it, the season mode that I play uh, consistently. There was nothing there. Ultimate Team, I think, was virtually the same. I don't know. I've seen loads of videos of people saying, I'm not playing FIFA ever again, all this stuff on YouTube and stuff, so whatever. Um, but yeah, you didn't really do a lot to innovate there. So you got innovative game, 
uh, FIFA 19, not that much changed. And then you've got a poor, piss poor and politically motivated, I would say, and uh, poorly marketed Battlefield game in itself. That's why it didn't sell. But rather than acknowledge your mistakes in, in your publicity and what people have said, uh, you've basically just said, ah, I didn't have a Battle Royale mode, so it didn't do well. Um, that's a quick fix, isn't it? And to just put the blame on something else and instead of looking in the mirror, saying you made a mistake generally, instead of actually looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, hey, as a company, you know, we, we, we fucked up in, in, in the marketing and everything else. But hey, there you go. Uh, having said that, they do have, uh, you know, they have got some interesting things up and coming, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. And again, I'm going to be speaking about... Um, Apex Legends, I'm gonna, and I'm going to be talking about, um, I was about to say the, the Division, it's not the Division, Anthem, uh, in this next part. Okay guys, the next game I want to talk about is Anthem, um, EA's baby as it were. I know it's a lot of EA related uh, news and it just is because it's it's what they're doing right now and it's, it's got to be spoken about. So Anthem came out. Uh, the demo uh, had some glitches uh, along with uh, a few problems, so I lagged out once or twice. It's pretty much standard, even though I'm wired now with my PS4. Uh, but again, it is a demo, so there's going to be teething troubles anyway. I lost sound once or twice, uh, but it is essentially a good game, and it feels like a Destiny copy and paste. Now, now that may seem negative, it may seem positive uh, from my perspective and what I've said in the past. I hated, I loved Destiny. I thought the game was great. I just didn't like the fact that I was sold a game, promised a story, got no story, and then was tried, and they tried to sell me the story later on. That fucking pissed me off. So I always criticize Destiny for that. And the same here, I don't want to get burned, so I'm kind of a little bit... Uh, how should I say, uh, a little bit wary of just picking up the game Anthem on day one. Uh, having said that, there's still other teething problems as well, such as the price point they've got thrown in there, where tw they've put it as $20 or whatever, £20, for a skin. Like, fuck that, I'm not paying that much for a skin. It's not a free-to-play game, like the Battle Royale games or whatever else, or Apex Legends, which I'll get to in a little bit. It's basically a full £60 game, so I'm not in, in, in the mood to be paying out uh, money uh, like that for skins and shit. That's insane. They did respond to the criticism, saying they were changing that daily and that wasn't fixed, but it's still like, why are you even changing it? It's a price point plan. I suppose they're being a little bit honest to say that they're going to be in there, which I do kind of appreciate because I'd hate to buy the game and then it's in there. But then again, if it is in there, I'll just ignore it anyway. And I recommend you guys do the same uh, unless you feel value for money or out of what you're getting for the game. Then by all means, uh, I just hope to God they have reasonable pricing at the end of the day. Uh, they're seeing that battle royal money and they're kind of like, yeah, we want that. And um, come on, they should, hopefully to God they would have learned their lesson from the previous Star Wars. But whatever. So it is going to be in there. I hope those prices are low. I haven't said that. The game is really good. It's kind of solid. I'm enjoying it. I played it with my friend. We played some bosses. We completed it. I ran around in a mech. Different uh, mech suits or whatever. I don't know what they call them. Forgive me of the terminology because I just don't know all of the ins and outs of the game. Uh, but I'm definitely interested in, in playing the story uh, and seeing what those uh, in the online. Uh, whatever. But at the same time, I'm worried about those price points. And even then, I just hope the story is a good one. And uh, I might pick that up uh, just to play with uh, Chaos. I don't know if I'll bother recording it, but there you go. Um, because it's just one of those games. And it is one of those games you'd have to play with friends, um, which is fine. Um, so if you're a multiplayer person, you might enjoy that. Especially if you like Destiny, I'd recommend you pick up pick up this game in that aspect. Um, like I said, I hope there's a story, and I hope that the price point's pretty good. Having said that, that's a game up and coming, and it's going to be out in February. Uh, now they've launched Apex Legends, which is another one of EA's games, based in the Titanfall universe. We thought it was going to be Titanfall 3. Uh, I have read that this is a spin-off, and they're still going to be releasing a Titanfall 3 game, which is going to be a premium game, so there still might be a Titanfall 3 out. Um, so the, this game, Apex Legends, is launching, or has launched, sorry, with the same, uh, in the same timeline as Anthem. So then you've, they've kind of split the community, because people are going to be playing Apex Legends and might enjoy that, uh, and try and get invested in that for a couple of months, and then all of a sudden they've released Anthem, which means they might not pick up Anthem because they're occupied with Apex Legends. If they want to cash in on the timeline, then maybe what they should have done, the smart thing, would have been to release their Battle Royale mode now in Apex Legends, let people get on with that for a couple of months and that will compete with the likes of Fortnite and PUBG or whatever it is. And then 
in the summer when there's no games really coming out release anthem and then people would have been like yes anthem i've been waiting for this it's really anticipated we've had enough of apex legends we want a story-based game we want a different thing there's nothing happening in the summer give us this game and instead they've launched it so it's kind of competing with themselves so it's kind of ridiculous giving people that choice yes but when the competition is yourself it doesn't really make logical sense but whatever it is what it is hence the reason that i just release one video per day on average but anyway uh, so that's their choice. Um, now, I have enjoyed Anthem, and it looks interesting. Like I said, that's on the sideline. We'll wait for that, see what happens long term. Apex Legends launched. I have played it. It's my first Battle Royale game that I've properly get on, got into. You can watch me play that. Um, it's it's pretty good. I've been continuing on. I'm, I don't know how it works, but I'm nearly level, I'm level 6 or level 7, and I've only got one kill. Don't ask me how that happens. Whatever. But I basically run, get weapon, and I've become really adaptable to it. So I've kind of dove in. It's a typical battle royale game, and then you pick up weapons, find weapons, and then you basically look for the enemy. So it's kind of fun. I am enjoying it. It's a little bit addicting. I do get bored after about an hour, maybe, but I think I'll just turn it off and then you know whatever else. Uh, but it is a fun game. However, uh, Bruce and I even talk about it specifically, and I want to get into this article. But before I do, I want to make uh, something perfectly clear because a lot of people don't really understand. Uh, sometimes I get a bit confused between my opinion. So, first and foremost, uh, this has to do with the... Uh, I'll read the name of the article to know where we're going with this, first of all. It's called Two Apex Legends Characters Are LGBTQ, says EA and Respawn. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So, my point, standing point of the LGBTQ characters, whatever, the gay characters in games is the following... I do not care if you're a straight man playing a gay character. I do not care if you're a gay player, a uh, gay uh, man playing a straight character, i.e. how I met your mother, Barney, you know what I mean? It's great, whatever, love him, it's great. Uh, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Uh, it does not bother me if there's a gay character in a video game. What bothers me is when you take pre-existing characters like Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, just say, for example, because they're already well-known and established, or James Bond even, and you make them gay to fit your political narrative and I don't like that. It's bullshit. And they're already pre-existing characters. They're fan base. And they're already... There's a whole history there of a particular character. And I just I just don't agree with it in the slightest. So anyway. Uh, there's these two new characters. Which don't have any pre-existing uh, notion. You've made a totally new character. And you've made... His backstory is... He's gay. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Uh, the reason I mention it specifically other than this article. Is I saw a tweet from somebody. And it was pointed out. Maybe as a young kid, basically tweeted EA, and he liked this character called Gibraltar. Gibraltar, I think his name is. And basically he's gay, or openly bisexual, whatever, or openly gay. And the kid, I assume, again, it's a young person. The kid said, I really like this character. I think his ability is good. I'm invested in him. He's fun, whatever. Can you please change his backstory? Because I don't like the idea of playing with a gay character. I understand he has uh, an opinion on that. But at the same time, it's already a pre-existing character and it's new. Like, uh, it's a new character, sorry. It's not pre-existing. So they've made his uh, character gay. You just have to deal with that aspect of it. So I think it's kind of childish to even ask it, them to change his backstory. Um, it's not like it's already a pre-existing. It's his own project just at, uh, over it at the end of the day. So he just have to get over it or just move on to another character, which I, I didn't know any of them were gay. I didn't really care one way or the other. But at the same time, uh, you know, just play the game, you know what I mean? But anyway, that was this particular kid's tweet asking him to change the backstory, which I don't think is right. Uh, but anyway, so we'll get into this a little bit further. Apex Legends is already making waves in the Battle Royale genre, genre, sorry, and it's also providing to be ahead, uh, proving to be ahead in the game when it comes to the LGBTQ representation too. Both EA and Respawn have confirmed that there are two A. Apex Legends, the LBGTQ characters, amounting to a quarter of the current roster. These uh, legends, uh, to give them their in-game titles, are part of the game's forward-thinking approach to representation of minority and marginalized groups. Mm. EA's official bio page for the legends, you have to really research their backstory, I don't really give a shit about it or the game enough to do that. Specifically notes the sexuality of Gibraltar, one of eight characters you can play in as Respawn just released Battle Royale. He is revealed to have once gone on a joyride when he was, uh, when he and his boyfriend, so he's gay, uh, stole his father's motorcycle, making him an openly gay or bisexual protagonist at launch, a rarity in the medium. Uh, it probably, I agree, it kind of is a rarity in the medium, um... 
at the same time i would say they flirted with bisexuality maybe a little bit in some games life is strange i think there's a couple of lesbian kisses or girl ki whatever you want to call it or you know i just assume one of both of them were bi or especially chloe but whatever who knows um the lgb representation doesn't stop there as revealed by jay Fretchett, community manager at respawn during an interview with rps uh is the fact that there are, is a second Apex Legends uh, character with uh, confer confirming, fresh yet confirmed to the reporter Nick Rubin that Bloodhounds. Now, this is where it gets a little bit annoying to me, but I'll throw it out that it is what it is. Bloodhound is non binary or at least non specific in terms of gender. I can deal with a gay thing, but I actually don't really care for that crap. Um, like, I don't agree with it. Somebody actually got banned on um, on Twitch for saying there was only two genders. So be warned, this video might get uh, demonetized, I don't know. But you know what I mean? I don't buy into that, really. I've got to be honest with you, I just don't. Uh, in fact, the entirety of the Apex Legends roster is refreshingly diverse group, along with two uh, fundamental LB characters, yeah, our three are women, and two of those women are black, yeah, I did notice that, actually, it is perhaps worth noting that the caustic, the, literally they're using that word, caustic, a white male, really? Why use that word? Caustic, a white male, is locked behind over a dozen hours of grinding through gameplay or available at a cost of not £8. Considering the majority of games tend to feature white male protagonists, Respawn has certainly opted for a change of the pace in this regard. So I, 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 I wouldn't have phrased it like that, but I get it to a point. Whether I agree with it or not is a different story, but it's like... So you've locked a, 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 a character away specifically because he's white? Hmm. Hmm. It would never have been put that way if it was the other way around. Like, if you want to play as a black character, he's locked behind hundreds of hours of whatever, or you have to pay for him as a, as a premium. Like, they don't want you to play as that protagonist, being ethnically diverse or whatever. You have to pay for that. It would not be put around. See how it would have. It's done for the for the um, how it's like done in a positive way in theory for oh the white male is locked away behind an actual paywall. But if it was the other way around, it would be criticised. Um, you know, trying to. I could imagine it being spun that way. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, of course. They've also made other strides in recent months when it comes to revealing uh, characters uh, Blizzard announced via comic back in January that Overwatch Hero Soldier 76 is gay. Yeah, they were the first uh, uh, Battle Royale game to do it. Overwatch, with their, their patch, they put in somebody who was gay specifically or openly. Uh, with the lack of broiler surrounding uh, these two reveals in particular uh, at launch, this may uh, indicative of the idea of a positive LGBTQ representation, lack of abuse that comes with new normal and battle organs, new boil beyond, blah, blah, blah. So basically they're saying, you know, more of us to come kind of thing, I suppose. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comment section about that. I personally don't care if the character's gay. I don't particularly agree with the wording or, or how it's uh, done. It or said in that, like, oh, we put a white character behind the thing because it's not the new original. I don't know. I don't, maybe I didn't like the wording of the article in itself. I wouldn't have put it quite clearly, like, but I wouldn't have put it that way. But whatever, it is what it is. Um, so if you're gay, lesbian, whatever, are you happy that there's two Apex Legends and they're gay or represent you in this way? Personally, I don't really give a shit if you are gay or straight or whatever. It should not define who you are. Um, if, you, if somebody chooses to tell me that about themselves, then that's their choice. If they don't, then they don't. Um, it's irrelevant to me. I'm interested in the person as the person. Um, you know what I mean? It's not like I'm not going to say I'm not your friend or whatever. That's just my take on it, though. Uh, uh, from a video game perspective, do you care about what um, what character you are? I personally have been playing and been, I have been enjoying it. I didn't care that my character was gay or bi or whatever it was. I didn't even know. And now that I know, I don't even care. So let me know what you think in the comment section of that either way. Uh, so that is, uh, sorry, we're 20 to 3 minutes into this video, I know, but at the same time, there's a lot to talk about here. We're going to go on more EA stuff now. I hope you just uh, are enjoying this. Listen to it as a podcast if you want. It's just me rambling, but it's me giving you facts and opinions. So uh, please bear with me at this point in time. Okay, guys, this uh, story is still relating to EA, but a little bit more of uh, news for people uh, other than these uh, Battle Royale modes and shit, because they are driving me nuts. I know this video has been on about Battle Royale galore. Um, but yeah, let's speak about EA's um, 
new games coming out later this year. EA has, EA has confirmed uh, a new Need for Speed is coming later this year. Publishers of Electronic Arts have announced two investors will see we're seeing we'll be seeing new games from the both likes of Planet Plants vs Zombies and Need for Speed in April 2020. Uh, EA Chief Operating and Financial Officer or whatever uh, Blake Jorgensen again that guy again pops up confirmed the return of these popular franchises in a new release attached to EA's third quarter in the fiscal year of 2019's earnings a real page turner uh he says we are making adjustments to improve execution and we are refocusing r d looking um forward uh, we are delighted to launch anthem and our new ip to grow apex legends which again i think will grow in popularity over time especially uh if you don't like building and stuff and release the titan 4 experience to deliver uh new plants versus zombies and need for speed titles to and add to star wars jedi a fallen order to our sports titles in the fall so a return uh the um star wars jedi fallen order is also coming out as well um I remember it got delayed then it got cancelled and i didn't hear anything about it since but here we are need for speed uh payback was the last game in the fan favorite fran uh, racing franchise it was released in november 2017 to so a fairly mid middling critical and commercial reception obviously what people really seem to want is a remaster of need for speed 2 underground uh, underground 2 sorry but we are much more likely to be getting a brand new entry into series rather than a rehash on old ground ea also confirmed the story driven star wars jedi fallen order would arrive by fall 2019 alongside a new premium titan full spin-off and plans to build on momentum of a recent release free to play titan full spin-off apex legends so we are getting a new Titanfall kind of game, which is going to be premium, like I said in the previous part, uh, regardless of Apex Legends existing or not. So that's really cool. So more or less, it has been confirmed uh, at this point. Uh, it's very uh, EA boss Andrew Wilson said the upcoming Star Wars on the upcoming Star Wars release is very far along in development and having spent time with in recent with it recently myself it plays spectacularly well the game truly captures the fantasy of becoming a jedi and we have more to share soon it is an exceptional inceptional in terms of its level of polish depth and living inside the star wars world as a jedi uh, of course ea would doubt doubtless make vast swimming pools worth of cash in which it splash around in if it ever did re-release either underground games so you would have to wonder why they haven't done and that's so uh, i don't know why they haven't done that why they haven't re-released some games a lot of games uh companies are actually remaking games and uh making them have put ps4 graphics and i very much applaud that giving this uh an opportunity i've got to be honest with you an opportunity for everyone who didn't play the playstation 3 or ps2 or whatever um to really come forward and, and really experience the full experience of all these great franchises over the playstation there was some news about PS4 being backwards compatible as well, which was a separate article. I, I don't know why, but I can't find the article. I was going to talk about that, actually. But uh, maybe that would be another video. I just don't know at this point in time. Um, but it would be fascinating. Uh, apparently, I'll just touch on it, man. PS5 is supposedly coming, are going to be backwards compatible. But how backwards compatible? Does that mean we're going to have PS4 games on the PS5? If so, that would be fantastic, and I would absolutely love that. Uh, but at the same time, they're talking about PS3 games also being available for the PS5. Wow, that would be phenomenal. Maybe it'd be under a service thing like PlayStation Now or whatever it is. I don't know. I'm not too sure. I don't really want to pay out for that, to be honest with you. I'd rather just have the option on the PS5 to just simply put my games in or maybe just download them um, at a small price of three or four pounds or whatever if I want to pick and choose what PS3 games I want to play. But they're even talking about going back further and putting PS2 games on there as well. If that happens on the PS5, backwards compatible, and it goes back to the PS2 generation, I would say PS1, but let's go PS2, because let's face it, everyone loves PS2 going forward. PS1, very old. Some people might be into it. I personally won't be. I'll be playing the PS2 onwards kind of franchises. i got to be honest with you. But if that happened in 2020, the PS5 backwards compatible, i got to be honest with you, it would be a game changer. It would be generation PlayStation, because you pick up a PS5 and you go through the franchises of PS2, PS3, PS4, PS5. It would be incredible. 
it would be absolutely incredible. I would go back through legendary games, uh, Time Splitters 2, um, there was Run Like Hell, I love that game. Uh, I don't know if they do that though, and the reason I say that, unless they do it under a premium where you've got to pay the £10 a month thing, which they might end up doing, A, they want to make money, B, they want you to buy new games uh, and not invest in those old games, so when I, instead of paying £4 for an old game, or £5, or £6, they want me to be buying their next Anthem game, they want me to be buying their next Destiny, or whatever it may be, they do not want me playing on the older games, uh, in theory, because uh, they're getting little bits of money, instead they want that big money, but realistically, uh, what you're doing is you're picking up pockets, little bits of money from people who are more likely to buy them, because games are very expensive these days, um, and then those people, or hardcore gamers like myself, will still pick up your big franchises anyway. So, it could be a game changer. I don't see them, in theory, doing it. I mean, they could do it. They've put on a few PS2 games um, on the on the PS4, I think like Max Payne and stuff, and even Bully, I think that was a PS2 game as well. So it, So, basically, they're capable of doing it. So it might actually happen. We're partly seeing that already on PS4, and they know there's a market for it. One of my biggest views or, or my playthroughs is the Bully series. You can watch that from Rockstar Games. So they're seeing there's a market for it. They've kind of tested it on their PS Store, so it may be happening. I've got to be honest with you. And if that does happen, it will be a massive game changer because it will be X, uh, PS5 is the absolute must-have. But at the same time, Xbox competing directly with that, I've bought up studios and we'll be making new IPs and having more exclusives because they, instead of comp uh, playing, uh, trying to f get companies to make games for them, they just bought the company and said, right, now we own your talent, make games for Xbox. And um, also, they'll be able to, now if these games, some of them will be exclusive to Xbox, but at the same time, if they are game, if they're happy to make them multi-platformer, they'd be getting, Microsoft to be collecting money from gamers all over the world in respect to PC gaming and uh, PS4 players as well, if they make a multi-platformer, because they'd be getting the profit from PS5 uh, owners or whatever, and, um, and, and their Xbox gamers as well, so that's also a possibility, a marketing strategy. Uh, you can cut certain games off who you think your AAA games and then just say, well, your second project isn't that great or not important to us, but we will let that be multi-platform and we get some more money and and off of um, off of the PlayStation players. That's, and that'd be a smart move. I've got to be honest with you. Uh, they just bought out, bought their competition kind of thing. You know what I mean? So that'd be very interesting to see. And more interestingly, so what will Sony do? Will they just do the generation PlayStation thing that I said to do? Uh, but they're still going to have their own exclusives anyway. They'll be a good couple anyway. Like, I don't know if Uncharted's finished and that'll be the end of it. But God of War, assuming there's going to be another one of those and whatever else in The Last of Us. Maybe it end at two. Don't know. Um, There was another bunch of stories, but this video has gone on for quite a while. Um, at this particular point, I, let me know if you enjoy these long story videos. Um, man, I could almost make another video out of this at this point. Um, how long are we into this? Eight minutes. We're about we're about half an hour in, guys. I think I'm gonna leave it here, and maybe next time I'll talk about uh, some other stories. Um, but yeah. Um, I hope you guys, uh, oh yeah, take part in this week's poll, um, we'll be returning to Mafia 3 next week, I don't think there'll be a food review this week, I'm not too sure, I don't think there will be at this point, um, yeah, I haven't filmed it or anything, but I'll do a tip video on Monster Hunter, uh, my ultimate tip guide or kind of thing that I did a while ago, but I just never released it, um, I have no Road to Glory this week, unfortunately, um, Possibly next week I will. I have a goal of a month out for you guys. So there's a lack of content this weekend, I feel. Um, so my mistake, my apologies for that. This video may come out on a Saturday. I don't know because it's late on now at this point in the day. It might not get uploaded until very, very much later on. Um, yeah, so this week's poll. Um, I probably had one or two other things to say really, but... Uh, this week's poll will be, which is your favourite Battle Royale game? Take part on Twitter, take part in the community tab. Um, I haven't actually looked up a community tab and seeing uh, if people want... What did they say? What did you guys vote on, actually? Um, on my thing, if I can just... Okay, I don't know if I can do that now. Can I do this? If I get copyright, I'm going to be so fucking pissy. Because I can't actually... Stop the thing. 
if I can. Hold on, I'll just go quickly. No. Hold on. Boom. Right, the community tab. Right. So I went to the community tab. Uh, I posted the, the uh, poll six days ago. If you enjoy me playing Road to Glory, please vote on it. 47% said scrap it, 53% play on a lower setting. So people are interested in it, maybe I'll play on um, professional, whatever, and see how that plays out. I'll pick a different team as well, but I'll do that next week because it's too late in the week now. It's Friday, more South Park today, um, and I and this video will come out as well. But yeah, and I'll just do a, I'll, I'll do a strategy guide for Monster Hunter uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, so this week's poll, I'm going to leave in the community tab, don't forget to check that out, will be, which is your favourite battle battle royal game? So, PUBG, Apex Legends, Fortnite, Black Ops. Those are your four I'm going to give you, I don't know if there's any more out there. Uh, wow, man, this video's gone on for quite a while now, so it's well half an hour. <laughs> anyway guys, so that will be this week's, um, this week's poll, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I've released a lot of content over the past week. And a bit in the weekend. I don't know if there's going to be too much over this weekend. I am sorry about that. But you've got this video. You've got the South Park. You'll have a goal of the week. I think I'll do that. And a strategy guide for Monster Hunter on the best tips I feel. Um, goes on for an hour. But fuck it. It is what it is. Um, anyway guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you want to buy my merchandise. If you want to tip me uh, via PayPal to help me run this channel. That is in the link in the description below. You can follow me on social media. You can also join my Insane Brick Gaming community. And uh, I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.